Hello, everybody. It was a sitcom originally called Life and Stuff. And that's exactly what America saw. Everyday family life headed by a mother unlike anything TV had ever seen. A brassy comic taking on the hottest topics in the funniest way imaginable. Hey, sounds familiar. Now she's back with the rest of the Connor crew and no doubt the new Roseanne will be as groundbreaking and funny as ever. I'm on my way to the set of the Roseanne show for the Roseanne show reboot. It's been 20 years. I'm so happy to see you. It's pretty amazing. It's very exciting, but it's very emotionally overwhelming. Am I ready yet? It's September 2017. <laughs> And it's a family reunion. You're great. Yeah. Ah, baloney. Roseanne and the rest of her castmates are gathering to read through the script. The name of the number one script, 20 Years to Life. Not bad for a one-time struggling comic who parlayed her unique take on family life into a life-changing appearance on The Tonight Show. She's a housewife from Denver, Colorado. Oh my god, I was anything but relaxed. Being funny on The Tonight Show made your career if you were a comic. Getting on The Tonight Show was the thing that every comic in Los Angeles was desperate to do. And this is her very first appearance on national television. Would you welcome Roseanne Barr. Roseanne? I thought I was going to fall over. I'm obsessive, so I must have done that seven minute act like 150 times. I hate that word, housewife. I prefer to be called domestic goddess. <laughs> it's very hard to understand how one spot on one show could make or break your career as a comedian. The Tonight Show was that spot. The Carson spot leads to more work and more national exposure. What does it take <laughs> to, to become successful and how tough is it for you compared to men? I think it's hard to be a man comic, actually, Harder? yeah, because they're generally not funny or intelligent. <laughs> Marcy Carcy and Tom Werner meet up with Roseanne and they get talking about the possibility of doing a sitcom that would focus on a character like the one Roseanne talked about in her stand-up. It started with an idea about how interesting it would be to, to portray a family in which the mom was a working mom. I was inexperienced as far as acting and but I was a big fan of sitcoms all my life and I always pretended that I had the Roseanne show. Marcy and I were developing this idea and we said, well, you know what, this may be a hard sell actually, even though we had the Cosby show on television, which is the number one show. NBC passed on it and then we brought it to ABC. So they cast it and the first thing they do is they get John Goodman. And they need to get people who are really good because Roseanne has no acting experience. All I knew about Roseanne Barr that she was a rising comedian and she was on a Pizza Hut commercial. That's the only time I'd ever seen her. How about if we take the kids out for pan pizza and you can eat at the salad bar? We hit it off from the very beginning. We kind of made each other laugh and uh, that's why I felt like I had the job as soon as I left the audition. We go broke trying to pay him. We end up in a poor horse, hard. <laughs> Wilbur! <laughs> nobody else was ever considered. We kind of bonded around making each other laugh, and, and he has a working class background too, so I knew he was the guy, and as soon as I read with him, I knew we had a hit show. Feel this, baby, there's a 200-point game pulsating through these fingers. <laughs> Let's not waste it on bowling. <laughs> and then the next person they brought in was Lori Metcalf to play the sister. I had a real heavy theater background, zero TV, and I allowed myself two weeks to be in LA, and during those two weeks, I happened to go on the Roseanne audition. So I was literally in the right place at the right time. Lori was their, like, tow, tow truck driver. He, she'd uh, nudge her into the marks and, uh, and then let her go. You know, it sort of steer her <laughs> this way. Yeah, I guess I was that. So to push here, push there. Then meeting the kids, we auditioned a lot of kids. <laughs> I was eating Chinese food with my family and I opened a fortune cookie and it said, you will be graced with the presence of stardom. And then the phone rang and it was a callback for Roseanne. Come on, just answer my question. It's none of your business. It is my business when you start sneaking out of this house to meet some guy that I would consider leaving your father for. <laughs> I'd never been 
in an audition process before other than like for the school plays. <laughs> Michael came in, he was six. He looked like my family. And he sits down, he goes, wanna hear a joke? So I'm like, yeah. So I asked her, why did the turtle cross the road? I go, I don't know. And the punchline was chicken stay off. Chicken stay off. I go, you're hired. Mom, I finished folding the laundry. Thank you, honey. You're one of my three favorite kids. <laughs> what about me? No. <laughs> it was the absolute first thing I had ever done. Uh, it was a life changer. When I met the entire cast, I think we went to a Howard Johnson to have our first table read. And seeing the family trickle in was just so exciting. She started, she started it. it. Oh, OK, we know who started it. No. It was the first time I got this feeling. Even though I was young, I just felt like, oh, we have something big here. They certainly did have something big here. A cast member who would later go on to become Academy Award winner, George Clooney. We used to play basketball together. You know, he's that cute and charming and someone you want to pal around with in real life. George Clooney was you know, just the manager at a factory on a show and was a small character. And we all felt like he was magical and he was a great guy. All right, listen up, everybody. I got an important announcement to make. You're a woman trapped in a man's body. <laughs> on set, the cast finds chemistry and comedy, but behind the scenes, there is drama, lots of it. The show that will soon return for its 10th season was once in real danger of never making it through the first. They knew they had something really special here, but they also had somebody who wasn't used to the rules of television and who was not going to be easy to work with. Uh, my feet hurt and I got periodic bouts of depression, but other than that, I'm fine. <laughs> I don't know if she told you this, but we were editing the pilot and Roseanne called me up and I was just checking with her and I was saying how great the, uh, the show was. And she's saying, I'm not sure I want to do any more episodes. And I said, what? Big trouble. Uh, the network wants to pull the plug. Roseanne hates the script. The writer hates Roseanne. It's a mess. And that will begin uh, a high stakes battle between two very powerful people on this show. Roseanne Barr, its star. Matt Williams, its uh, creator and executive producer. That will never be resolved. We had big fights. Oh, yeah. We all were aware of that, yeah. I mean, we were right there. Roseanne wanted him out. Roseanne wanted control of the ship creatively. The tension was, you know, unbelievable. I remember he threw over a table and chairs and said, I'm not a scribe. She was promised a show to voice her point of view. And what was on the page at that point was really not that. The show premieres in October of 1988. As the cast watches the pilot, Roseanne notices something is missing. Because that is the first time that Roseanne Barr sees the credit created by Matt Williams. She believes that she is the creator of Roseanne. Oh. <laughs> Roseanne had it tougher because as a woman coming into it, uh, especially in those days, she really had to fight for the power. You were in the first year of Roseanne. Mm -hmm. It was a big hit. Yeah. You played what her boss. Yes. The first season, she wanted it to be a specific way. Um, uh, Matt Williams did not. Uh, and there was a big fight, and she eventually asked Matt to leave. Now, um, Matt's a nice guy and, and very talented. Roseanne was right. And so that is the question. Is this show actually going to proceed without Roseanne? People told me that he was keeping a list of all the offensive things I did so that they could replace me. And, you know, it included, <laughs> included belching and things like that. <laughs> In the end, Williams decides to leave the show over creative differences. Matt Williams goes on to create Home Improvement with Tim Allen, which is hugely successful. I knew I would have the last word, and I always did. Well, she's around and Matt's not. <laughs> There you have it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.